Harrison Osterfield. How you doing, mate? Welcome to Shoreditch. Thank you very much. It's a very nice little setup you've got up here, and you've got it all sorted out. So yeah, no. thanks, man. This is our new. You're our first guest first in the new, in the new studio. Space. Yeah. How are you feeling? Mm. Yeah, I feel good. Not as it's pumped bit... re- response as I was hoping for. You're like, oh, well, yeah, had to think you. about it. Had to think have a look around. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm feeling all right actually. Yeah. Good. Yeah. No, I, I'm I'm happy. I'm very like chilled at the moment. Good. I was looking for problems in my head then, okay. and there was nothing. That's, that's so, a good sign. Yeah. Yeah, I'm into but that. But I was up early this morning because we did like a, a British Entrepreneur Taster event. Okay, so, um, nice. yeah, it's been What's early? Um, six? Yeah, that's early. That's yeah, early, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I'm, I'm an, I, I have to get up at seven each day. That's If, if I get up later than that, I'm kind of like the day's kind of gone. I need to be like working in that seven to eight window. Really? For me to be, feel good about myself, yeah. Really? Yeah, well, I, I think so. I mean, like, it also... It makes you go to bed earlier as well. If I'm like, oh, if I'm only going to get six hours or potentially four hours sleep or something like that, you need to need to be going to bed and waking up at seven. Do you, I, not, do you not find that when you go to bed thinking you've got to be up at seven that you can't sleep, like when you get on a plane? Well, any sort of moving transport, I'm like like that. I'm really good at sleeping on transport. Like any plane, bus, car, even even the car here, I was I was feeling a bit sleepy. I was like, maybe I should get a tea or a coffee in when I get here to wake up again because I'm waking up at seven. It's so yeah. early. You know why? That's because you get up too <laughs> yeah, early. That's why you yeah, just yeah. sleep all day. But you were, yeah, exactly. But you were up at six. So uh, yeah, no, good job. Um, yeah, no, I'm good. So how are you? How are you? you good? I'm pumped. I'm, yeah? yeah I'm, I'm, good. I'm ready to roll. Yeah, no, I'm good, mate. Really Got good. Coffee. good. Had, had a good week. So that's good. Good. So actor, entrepreneur, well, yeah, I guess. Everything. Yeah, a bit of jack of all trades, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, the, the entrepreneur side has definitely come later in life. I'm only 26, but I, I, I wouldn't class myself as that quite yet. I'm on the road to it, I yeah, think. Yeah. But uh, yeah, started acting, done that for properly for about five, six years, and yeah. then went into a bit of modeling and fashion stuff, and then uh, now into some, yeah, new, exciting new ventures, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, we we were just talking before, mm. um, and uh, one of the things you said is in your twenties you need to hustle, right? Which is such an interesting thing because I'm forty two, right? So w- when I was in my twenties, like everyone just did one thing, right? And now what I see, especially someone like yourself, yeah. when I was in my twenties, if you're an actor, you were just an actor. That was sure. it. And yeah. also, you only acted in one thing. Like Hugh Grant. That's the stable guy. <laughs> like, that's what you're yeah. getting. You know what you're getting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, You do romantic comedies. You're not allowed to do anything I else. I think that still, that still happens in the acting world. Really? I, mean, like, I always get cast in period stuff, like as in, like, Victorian, World War Two, all of that kind of stuff. I'd love to do something modern. It would be nice to be out of these, like, frocks and, like, corsets <laughs> and all sorts. But, um, but yeah, no, I, I agree. I think... Do you think the internet's had a big play in that? I was going to ask you because you're 26, yeah, right? So I'm 16. I started my first company at 26 and that was like not unheard of, but not many people in their 20s started companies. Right, okay. And this is not even long ago, right? Yeah, yeah. But now you're someone who's 26, same mm. age as me when I started a company. Yeah. Acting, entrepreneur, yeah. nearly a million followers on Instagram. So you yeah. completed that almost. You probably won a million, right? <laughs> I imagine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so you, you've completed the game, you know, as a modern entrepreneur, sure. you know, 20s hustler. Yeah. If that's what, you 20s know. 20s hustler. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not I'm not going to coin that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, um, so yeah, for me, it was much easier to, you know, well, I started a company and that was, I was a business guy, entrepreneur, whatever, sure. you know, so. Yeah. Now, being in your 20s, one of my big questions for you mm. is that I, I started my company, felt like I'd done it. Yeah. But now I imagine, you know, you could start a company, but now there's so much more you have to do. You know, you have to do loads of different things. How, how hard is it now? And where, is, where does most of your pressure come from? Uh, I think the, the good thing for me is that I've been, you know, acting for five or six years and been able to get some sort of acclaimed success from that and you yeah. know solidify, my, solidify myself as a British actor that was really important for me I think like as long as you get a few couple jobs and you're like oh that's the actor guy uh, that was really important before I went and ventured into other things as we've said I think it is good to be in a lot of different pools and trying new ventures and things but at the same time you don't want to spread yourself so thinly that none of those are making a difference so it was important for me to sort of get that kind of 
public figure in a way kind of thing and then be yeah. able to use those you utilize those contacts and networks for other business ventures i think a massive thing for me growing up is really realizing how networking is so important it's the kind of cliche thing but yeah. i've been in talk from my my stepdad who was a bit of like a wheeler dealer east end guy who seemed to know like the whole of london and growing up with him and he was a professional footballer but then went and did like all these other things of you know trading and everything like that so i've utilized that kind of experience and now i'm bringing all those networks and those community and important people and big players into what I want to do next. So I think it's really important to hustle in your 20s and then you reap the rewards, hopefully, in your, in your 40s. Are you reaping, you reaping the rewards? Yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd say so. Like, yeah. becoming content is, was a big one. That's late, very late 30s. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, but it, it's funny, a, a, a question I get a lot from younger guys is, <clears throat> if, if, what would I do now if right. I didn't have a company? Okay. And I don't even know. Really, yeah. like I, I kind of know the things I like, mm-hmm. but if I was to be twenty six again, you know, what would, like, what, uh, you know, I don't know who I'd look up to. I don't know, yeah. who, you know, back in the day we had like Richard Branson. He was yeah. like the cool guy, the pioneer, the maverick. In yeah, that sense. he was yeah. like, you know, that guy, really good at PR. You know, <laughs> really <laughs> whatever. Good at PR. Yeah. Um, but back then, you kind of was like, oh, guys own, owns owns his own business, got money, and has fun, right? Right. Yeah. But now. It, just feels like for younger people, people in their twenties, mm. um, they've got—I don't know—it just feels like they've got so much more pressure on them to do so much more stuff. It's like, how yeah. do they become content? Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, and I, and I hope that like I, I, I'm going to set aside this time at the moment. I'm, I mean, I have I have fun also, yeah. but at the same time, like. Let's utilize these years where I've got a lot of energy. I'm up at seven every day, so that's that's, that's a bit that's a big <laughs> turning point. Um, and basically, utilize the time and energy at the moment to to make something good and hopefully have, be content in that later later in life. Um, but also have fun while doing it. I, I mean, especially with acting, you get so bogged down quite a lot of the time because you can be it's a real roller coaster. You can be busy for a long time and then it goes quiet again and then busy again. So it was really important for me to do something else outside of that to basically suffice my sort of mental health of like not just sitting around waiting for the by the phone because with acting you can create your own material and I do a lot of writing as well um and but most of the time it's your agent and your manager who are going to get you the job or get you in that room and then once you're in the room you can capitalize on that but it's a lot of time you just feel like you can't make stuff happen so for me I like to be driven and you have to you have to get up and do it and, yeah, and, and and make those connections and make stuff happen. Yeah, I mean, even doing a podcast, right? Doing a podcast. So podcasts were unheard of when I was um, twenty six, right, and right. now I, I'm I even think about doing podcasts. Okay. I've done one one or two before. No, I've done a couple before actually. I've done a couple of them. Um, yeah, but I was like, well, I, no, I do the podcast, right? But then <laughs> now I'm. Thing. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay, I want to ask them questions. I want to learn off them. Yeah, I'm like, why does anyone want to ask me anything? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. I'm learning off people, but. Mm. But then I'm, I'm like, well, do I have to do podcasts to promote um, my stuff and all yep. this kind of stuff? So even, y- it's you an know. It's exposure tool, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. In that sense. Um, I, think they're, I think they're important. And I think there's so many different mediums now to convey a brand or convey a message. I think it's good to utilize all of them. And the way that like technology is moving so quickly forward, you have to be on the forefront of that and utilizing it. Otherwise you're probably going to get left behind. And especially with like the younger generation coming through and all the people that are on their phones, all the people that's on the internet, yeah. you, have to, you have to be on the forefront of that. Do you feel old at 26? I feel ancient. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> when no, you, I, you I, talk I, about the youngsters yeah, coming yeah, up. I'm I, like, yeah. dude, you're 26. Well, I'm it's interesting because we were saying before, like you were saying how, you know, you were 26 and you were coming up with your first company. I, when I was 21, I was like, Looking back, when I was 21, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm an adult now. And like, you know, I'm making stuff happen. But looking back five years later, I'm like, you were a kid. And I'm sure in five years time, I'm going to be like, all right, calm yourself down, sit yeah. down, this is the next step. But I think that's, I think it's good to realize your, your youth. But at the same time, you need to be in the mindset of like, oh, I belong at this space now, yeah. in, in a sense. And there's no restriction to what age that is. And I think age is just a, is, is a big thing and like I have mates who are a lot older than me and some younger as me as well and like it depends on your life experience and what you can do out of that basically yeah yeah and so I've, been, I've been lucky in what I've done with sort of you know 
uh, traveling with work and things like that. And I feel like once you get outside of your home or your town or your country, you you, you peg on a bit more and be like, yeah. wow, the world's a really big place. And yeah, you can you can yeah. kick on from that. And it's not as bad as people think. No. You, know, you know, you go there and you're like, oh, this is great. Yeah, you know, don't oh, watch the news. Yeah, yeah, just don't watch the news. Like that's the key. Um, yeah, that's so you acting, you did. I'm mm-hmm. um, done really well, um, and then now you own two companies. Co-founder of two companies. C- co-founder of two. Which was the first one? Carbon fingerprint. Carbon fingerprint. So, yeah. can I ask you about everything of that? Yeah. So it started with uh, me and my two schoolmates, um, who we went to boarding school with, lived very closely with, and uh, they went off to uni while I went off to do acting, and uh, we reconvened after they went to university. And we were talking about social media and I was just sort of in the uppance of getting some traction on social media, my face being on TV and stuff like that. So it was a real like, upward trajectory, but my mental health was declining from it just because you've got a lot of messages coming through. Some of the time it's pretty hurtful messages and people just taking the piss out of you for no reason. And like you can a bit off and like I'll give as much as I take but there was a kind of thing of like wow these, this, is a, this is a lot coming through and we were talking basically that we social media is just a bit f- f- am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Yeah it's a bit fucked. I mean like yeah. the, the toxic. Yeah it's so toxic and we basically formed a creative agency together and we wanted to work with people of influence to basically do collaborations but make sure those collaborations were going the extra mile. So instead of hashtag ad, it was hashtag ADD. So the extra D is going the extra mile to make sure it's like a good ethos of the project, um, being aware of conscious consumption, like is this thing going to be what people see? Yeah. Um, and then from that, we developed this thing called Carbon Fingerprint, which is basically a digital carbon calculator. So when Cristiano Ronaldo posts a photo it emits the same amount of carbon as like a small city. And that's due to all the data centers, the amount of energy that's being used from my phone to go to your phone all around the world. There's 1.3 million kilometers of sea cables that go underneath the world. Yeah, yeah. And we were kind of just shocked to the fact that not only is social media really toxic, but it's also really bad for the environment at the same time. Yeah. And the internet takes up about 6% of global emissions. That's set to double by 2030. And no one's really talking about it. So we wanted to create basically the awareness of that, but also a solution. So our carbon calculator is basically you can type in your social media handle and it will figure out how much carbon your social channels are offsetting, uh, off, uh, emitting, basically. Yeah, yeah. And then provide a solution through that for a subscription service of offsetting through re- reforestation, direct carbon capture, uh, and also uh, renewable projects as well. So it was a kind of... that's. That was a very long explanation. I apologise. No, it makes sense. Complete but, sense. Yeah. But, um, but it was a kind of thing that it was a, a boyhood thing where we were talking about it and we were like, yeah, let's go out and make something. We, as far as we know, we're the first people in this kind of space. Yeah. And we've been working with University of Exeter and a few sort of big players in some big organisations who have just joined on our board and we're set to launch properly in like sort of about two months. But we did a beta launch about two two years ago, and the feedback that we were getting from a lot of the influencers and things of like being like oh, I didn't have no idea that my basically my social media is basically harming the planet as well as you know can be a bit toxic as well and but it's been really receptive um, and it's just a, a project that I'm excited about because if we can basically offset the internet or make the internet run on renewable energy that would be that would be sick amazing so, so is it a website or is it an app it's a platform, yeah, it's a website. So it's a similar yeah. sort of in the way of Linktree, in a way. So it's like a bio link. Yeah, 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 yeah. So people can click on the bio link. They still have all the links of everything like that, but they're also showing you how much carbon you've captured and how much carbon you're offsetting at the same time. So it's a platform in that sense. We yeah. want to go into the app world of that and monitor yeah. screen time and, you know, move into that kind of space. But at this moment in time, we're a calculation service and then we have the solution for the offsetting as well. Interesting. So how much does Cristiano Ronaldo have to pay to offset his... <coughs> We're in conversations. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a lot. I mean, like over, over 10,000, if you have over 10,000 followers, it uh, works around around £2 a month. Right. And okay. that obviously escalates, but it also to do with your, how much you're posting, yeah, where yeah. your demographic is. 
all these variables are taken into account of your calculation and then yeah. that's it. But we have obviously it's that side of the influencers and the consumers, but we're also doing the business side of things where we're approaching businesses where they've said, you know, we're on our net zero pr- package. We're very proud of that. And you go, oh, so you're doing a digital emissions as well. And they're like, oh God, uh, wait, what? Uh, it's never yeah. ending. No, it's never it? ending. But in a sense, like, I suppose if you, it's a, it's a good thing because yeah. people aren't aware of it. And, yeah, yeah. and for us, we're not only raising that question and that awareness, yeah. but then also providing a solution through that as well. So, so in the future then, when everyone signs up to this, mm. if everyone signs up to it, obviously, yeah. obviously um, what kind of things, like initiatives, is that money going to? So we, are, we're, I was really keen on making sure that it's transparent as possible. I mean, there's been a few articles gone out recently of brands who are doing the sort of reforestation but then finding out that their money is not actually yeah. going anywhere right. so i was really keen to make sure that we're vetting those kind of projects and we work with one uh, partner called one tree planted where we're literally getting like monthly updates of where that money is going to you get all the content that goes along with that and you can actually go and visit the sites and things like that and we want to make sure that people are aware of that the others are renewable projects and they're quite exciting because they're kind of forward thinking things that are going to generate yeah. direct carbon capture and like the fact that the UK is like not putting any money towards those kind of ideas at the moment is just a bit yeah. baffling to us and the fact that we can potentially help and drive these new forward thinking projects is really exciting yeah. Um, so yeah those are the, the those are kind of the initiatives that we want to be able well, to it's, to it's, it's something that it's an idea that resonates with everyone because it, it like if people like building roads blah 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 you yeah. know it's not people use their phone every day they can like resonate yeah yeah so it makes sense and it's it's like a whole ethos is around sort of doing your bit i mean like the climate problem is is a huge one and it's quite overwhelming and the fact that you can sort of instead of you know having one cup of coffee a month you can instead offset all your social media and if like it's like a small drop in an ocean but the ocean is that big power of of potentially a big change have you approached instagram Make no. them pay for it. Yeah, well, that, I mean, like, we're open. I think you have to be open to those kind of conversations. And we and yeah. our kind of thing is we don't want to be competitive. We're like, we want to get Instagram or Facebook involved to be able to, like, have, like, a green tick. Can you imagine how sick that would be? Like, have yeah. that kind of thing. And we're, we're open in that sense now. And we're only a small, you know, startup. But the fact that the reception that we're getting from my network of people but also the people that we're bringing on to the team as well is really positive. Yeah, so. I know. Green tick's cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like that. Could this a is a good one. idea. Thank you. Like, no, 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 it's good. Yeah. Like, I checked it out, but I didn't understand it that clearly. Well, it's, so you've it's explained it well. Thing. I think it's like you need to get the awareness of it. And, yeah. and also, the like, if I say to you 10,000 kilograms of carbon, like, you're like, um, what, does that, what does that mean? Nothing. doesn't yeah. mean anything. But yeah. it's kind of, so we need to be on the forefront of making those awareness pieces and making them short, succinct, so people can be palatable to that. But like the, the facts of the, it, the internet has bigger carbon emissions than the aviation industry. Yeah. That's, that's a big one. The yeah. first, like Cristiano Ronaldo posting, it's like same as a small city. The largest data center in the world is the size of Mongolia. And it's just sitting there and the amount of water that's used to like cool down these centers, like clean water that's being used, which could be going elsewhere. It's a massive thing and no one's talking about it. So it's like a big thing to, it's a big project to take on. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm, I, I'm, I'm excited by it. And that's why I wanted to, to be a part of it. And it's a kind of thing of, it goes in line with all my businesses. I want them to go in line and conjecture with what I want to do yeah. in the acting world. Yeah, yeah. And their they're branches off into, into the right areas. Okay, so say, say for example, this takes off, which it could, quickly yeah and you make 10 million quid yep and then you buy a lambo <laughs> everyone's gonna kill well, you yeah lamborghini just so, bought that new hybrid um electric yeah right car. yeah so uh, that's the one i'll be going for it's no. a it's a v12 though it's still a v12 okay. but the thing right. is so here's a here's the funny thing right yeah. is that if you do an eco company and you make like a billion quid yeah. but you buy a lambo everyone okay. hates you yeah yeah so all so what can you even spend your money on you just end up living in a forest with a hammer. Yeah, I'm going to buy a big uh, treetop, uh, <laughs> treetop lodge. Like the richest guy. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I can, I can it's see It's a that. weird one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And you can't be hypocritical in that sense. So even and though it's, most it's are. The same, it's the same yeah. with like posting online. Like 
the fact that we're trying to basically cut down people posting online and, and say, you know, posting online is bad, but then you're posting all the time. So you're like, so what's, what's going on here? But it's about conscious consumption in that. Yeah. Being aware of it. It's Not so, many people are. So yeah. I think, but I, but I, I hear, I hear your point. I won't be getting a, I won't be getting a Lamborghini. That's, that's, a, that's the funny thing, isn't it? But, I, it's but also like, in, in that sense, like I, I think it can be exponential growing, but technology is also advancing. I think there's a big shift into trying to make it a bit more eco friendly, the world. So yeah. I think hopefully in the, the UK, technology, yeah, in the UK anyway. Yeah. 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 And yeah. so hopefully we can get on that, be a part of that wave as well. And yeah, making sure that people are going to change the ways a little bit. Yeah. I'm always, when it comes to like eco things, I'm always torn because I'm kind of old school. I love cars, you yeah. know, I've, you know, I've got a Lamborghini, you know, and you nice. know, stuff like that, Porsche. And you know, like I just love cars. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but, um, view, yeah. Say, yeah, your carbon <laughs> fingerprint's massive. Yeah, no, like I mean the, it, the thing is, but it's not like I drive them very often, right? right? So I'm way less than a cab driver. Okay, right? Even though I own, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so it's like it's such a weird one. Here's my issue with like the whole eco thing is that I don't mind if it's something you opt into. Yeah, but if you try and force it on me, I'm not interested. Okay, so and so, like I like this idea because if you get a green tick and you're paying a couple of quid a month and you're doing your bit, that's fine. Yeah. But it's like, you know, when they try and tell you what to do, you know, yeah. like the World Economic Forum, they're like creating, like net zero is just impossible. You can't, there's no such no, thing. No. It's it, for me, someone who's paid a lot of tax in the past, yeah. I see it as a tax. And right. <clears throat> when it, you know, you look at um, like, like come, the first mob ball I ever did 2007, mm. which is how I, you know, how I met Dayton for the first time, mm. I offset the carbon emissions. Right. Right, I, we, I spoke to a company that is in Devon somewhere, yeah, yeah. and I, we had to plant. I spent three grand on trees, right, to plant trees to offset the carbon emissions. Okay. This is two thousand seven, right, sixteen years that ago. Was early. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if, even if they planted those trees or not, but they well, took three silly. grand off me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, you know, I was thinking back then, you know, but but it, like when I look at the future of like money, mm-hmm. you know, and the way they want to um, give everyone a, a carbon ID. Mm. And so, say you say you fly five times in a year, and then all of a sudden your money shut off because you yeah, you, you've yeah. had five, and like that's just like crazy Orwellian control. Yeah, not into it, no, right? No, I agree. Yeah. I so, agree. like, your idea is cool because it's something you opt into. And I'm, I'm cool and with that. Yeah, and it's the opt in, and also it's like you can be in as vo- as involved as you want to be. There's sort of three tier systems of being like. A helper, a hero, and a legend. A helper is, you know, that's just offsetting your sort of thing. A hero is doubling that, and the legend is doing four times that. And especially for these bigger, these bigger people who have, you know, five hundred thousand followers or six hundred thousand followers, they have got a bit of money. They've been lucky enough to get attain yeah. that money, and they want to do their bit to give it back. And and it's the thing if we can get, you know, just people doing a, a couple pound a month here and there, like yeah. it, it, it can make a real difference. It yeah. can, it, like if you can get people on board and get people on line with the ethos, but yeah, yeah it, it, you don't have to, but also it's a kind of thing of, we're providing a free calculation. So yeah. it's not, you can figure that out and be like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And uh, actually, but I don't want to subscribe kind of thing, but it's going to hopefully be in your head of like, oh, that's interesting. And the fact that it might be in your head and you're like, did I really need to post this or do that? And, Hopefully it will drive that down a little bit, which would be good. I love it. Thanks. I love it because you opt in, mm. you know, and that, that's the, I think that's the key thing when it comes to all this climate yeah. stuff because a load of it's crap, you know, a load yeah. of it, they, the money goes nowhere, yeah. you yeah. know, and it's like, it, yeah, I'm, that, it all makes me uncomfortable. But the idea of opting in... And also for, and like, the businesses side, people want to do that and, like... Bad example. People want to like tick that box, and they feel like they've already ticked it of chucking, you know, three grand to go and plant trees somewhere, but they're not seeing where that's going and everything like that. But yeah. our sort of thing of being able to hopefully provide consultancy in that sense of like, you know, a Zoom meeting has this amount of energy. Those emails that you store on your thing has that amount of energy as well. Yeah, and it's like being conscious of it. I think, I think Twitter would be a really good place for it because mm. they've just changed the whole verified thing. Yeah. Elon, yeah. Elon, you know, he's into. Yeah. Te- his Tesla's it's obviously into 
like that would be I think that would work I think they're doing different colour ticks um, based on some of the ideas I said do you follow Elon on Twitter yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I think they're doing like yellow ticks and depending on if you're a company or corporate and stuff like that but so agree- moving into that space yeah yeah the green yeah. Yeah, would be- you should probably get oh, hold of him right now yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey I want 10% yeah, of this yeah. where is Elon well, it's just here <laughs> Yeah, no. But yeah, no, it's a, I think it's a really cool idea. I think, we, we, you know, social media has been around for a while. In Instagram, no one really uses Facebook today anymore. Like, I mean, some people... My mum does. Yeah, my mum, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, it's but, weird how that was like the biggest thing ever. Do you, then, do you remember MySpace? I was MSN, so I was slightly later. I don't yeah. know, is that the same? No, I don't think it is. No, no, no. My, MySpace was, and Tom, you know, like, mm. it, that was the original. Yeah, okay. The, the original. OG. And that was like, how is anything going to take this? And then all of a sudden, Facebook Crazy, came bro. And, and also, it's a kind of thing of, like, the world, the way it's going with AI and all of those, that kind of stuff, like, it's going to need more energy. It's going to need bigger spaces to, like, house all these all these things. The, the internet is invisible. It's yeah. Like, yeah, so... No, it's a really cool idea. Thanks, like, I genuinely, it's the only climate idea I've ever liked. <laughs> That's a bonus. And I can tell you don't like me. You're not, you're, 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 you're pretty, no, because yeah. it's like, it's, it, most of it's bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> most of it is bullshit. Like, and now you can, you can, you can see it. Like, it's, yeah. it's, you know, back in the day, you look at Bill Gates mm. and you'd, you'd make a billion quid or whatever and then they become a philanthropist, right? But right. really they're just churning their money for a tax evasion scheme sure. and have an influence. Yeah. But back in the day, PR, you'd get away with it. You can't do that now, yeah. right? And so all these, you know, climate things, all this kind of stuff that people, people, it's like people used to be like, they'd use it as a PR thing, mm. right? Early on and they'll use it as like a, like a, like charity. We yeah, give yeah. 10% to, no one cares. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you know, like, but now they can't get away with that. No. So you need really solid ideas. Yeah. And like your one's solid. That's good, man. It is yeah, solid. No, no. And uh, yeah, it's exciting, man. It's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think it's, it's cool. I just like the opt-in thing. I don't... Mm-hmm. I, like government after COVID and stuff, it's like government controls and the way they're doing things. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I don't... You know, it's like my kid getting a vaccine for my kid now. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm researching everything. Yeah. Like, what, how is in this? You know, see, and they call it never vaxxers. So they're, they're like, that's their new term. It's okay. like, so people like question everything because of what happened. Right. Um, and there's like this whole group of people now, that are, are, are demographic, I suppose, of never vaxxers, where they oh. qu- absolutely question everything. And that's what's come for COVID. And it's the same with climate, right? Yeah. Now everyone's like, no, 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 what exactly is yeah, happening? Yeah, Whereas yeah. before they'd get away with like some story on TV or, sure. you know, and you'd like, oh yeah, I do it. So I, my company looks cool. Yeah. yeah. But now you've got a it's really... accountability and especially yeah. on social media as well. Like people aren't just interested now in like p- posting that pretty photo of stuff. It's like kind of understanding that you can't be just face value anymore. People are going to look into yeah. your past. They're going to like figure you out, like who you are kind of thing. And yeah. you have to be switched on and, yeah. and be and be truthful in, in that sense if you can be maybe not a lot of people are but well no one likes a hypocrite yeah exactly right, yeah. right? they're the worst you know yeah. um, those guys yeah <laughs> <laughs> I've probably been a hypocrite in my life you know mm. but not like I don't think I've ever intentionally I'm, I'm lucky because I've you know when I was like 21 mm. no one filmed me going out partying sure thank yeah. god <laughs> you know when i was in ib for when i was 17 <laughs> on the strip you yeah, know like that, yeah. thank god no one's got photos of that mm. you know so i was kind of lucky not the same now is it no yeah. right like you you were talking earlier because both like sports you're saying about yeah. at the masters they well they can't have their phones with yeah them? you're not allowed to have your phones at the masters yeah it's fifty thousand capacity and i'm pretty sure you either tan them in at the beginning or you just can't you don't bother taking them and it just makes sure that everyone's present in a way and I think that's a really beautiful like a, that's a huge huge sporting event yeah and that's and it always confused me I'm like no one's taking a photo or anything like that but everyone's just clapping like living the moment and it makes it special yeah I think and you're not just seeing it everywhere or, or all on social media so I think some um, events like that is yeah it's really cool you and they're obviously saving on their carbon output right well, so yeah. you could calculate an event mm-hmm. potentially so one of the ideas we have at the moment is like we with with our partner One Tree Planted. They work with Coldplay and Young Blood, and they do all these sort of concerts around the world. And if you go to a concert, you're usually posting a photo, right? And live you, stream it, yeah, live stream it, yeah. all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And if we can get a hashtag of sort of 
that's going around the world and we've calculate how many people have used that calc- uh, the, the hashtag and how much carbon is emitted and then offset that as well as the festival or the performance. That's a cool little thing. Yeah. And, it's, and we're just like touching on stuff, like even with social media people of doing those collaborations with brands and things like that, they're always, what, 15, 20 seconds uh, video clips of something? Yeah. But, and if we can have the kind of carbon fingerprint badge of being like, this is... this. Uh, it's been paid. Yeah, portfolio has been offset and stuff like that. It's little things that just get that awareness out there and get people talking. I should have invested in this. Well, there's time, there's time bro. <laughs> <laughs> there's some time, there's some time. Um, okay, cool. So that's your carbon fingerprint, yep. which is quite a cool name as well, actually. Thank you, you come up with that. I, I, I can't take credit for that, unfortunately. Really? My mate did, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was there, I was there when it <laughs> happened and I went, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's roll with that. Um, but yeah, no, we've coined that for, yeah, we've got the, the trademark for that. Yeah. Nice. Um, and your other company, different end of the spectrum. Different, yeah. yeah. Alcohol. <laughs> Alcohol. <laughs> Same in the world and getting smashed while doing it. <laughs> yeah, no, um, again, yeah, a bit, a bit different. And yeah. it was a kind of thing for me where I've, I've been approached by alcohol companies and things before, and especially different brands and things like that, but they've never, I've never really been interested in it. Yeah. Um, and two family friends of mine came up to me and were like, hey mate, uh, we've got this white rum that we're thinking of launching. Um, would, you be, would you be able to just introduce us to a few people in London? And I was like, oh yeah, you know what, well send it to me first and I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. And they sent it to me and I tried it and I was like, this is really nice. <laughs> I was like, I don't drink rum. And I was like, that is really nice. Yeah, yeah, I'll introduce you to a few people. So I spent, I went around London and I brought the bottles with me and I was like, hey, have a taste of this. What do, what do you think of this? And then everyone that came back was like, this is really good. And it looks like a vodka bottle. Right. So it's a kind of thing of, I was chatting to them about it and I was trying to get a bit more on their ethos. And we basically came to the conclusion that like in the club world or restaurants and bars and stuff, you're always going to have like the Grey Goose and Belvedere and now gin and tequila. Tequila is quite big at the moment as well. But the rum category, it's all very masculine and a bit traditional. And it's like the dark rum, and yeah. especially in, in, in the clubs as well. Like for a bottle of rum, you're paying yeah a, a decent amount of money. But there isn't any white rum alternative. And the white rum alternative at the moment is like Bacardi. But there isn't a premium sense in that. And I wanted to be... My, I want my whole ethos and things to be a high level of, of premium stuff. So... Got chatting to people, and now I, I said to them after this feedback, I was like, hey, do you want me to come on board as like a bit more of a important person in this company? Like, I would love to be your very early stages. I feel like I can bring a lot of uh, network and sort of content yeah. strategy and everything like that. And they were like, mate, 100%. So now I'm a co-founder of a, a rum company, and it's been sick. It's been awesome. Like, the, the feedback that we were getting, I've been... We're going to sort of all these luxury hotels around London, getting yeah. on the cocktail list for stuff, being that alternative to like a premium vodka, but bringing a bit more character and a bit more development in that rum. Yeah. It's good, man. I can, I can feel your excitement. I'm excited. Like yeah. when you talk about your businesses, mm. It's like your energy is way higher than your acting. <laughs> yeah. Is that, like, am I, is that uh, yeah, right? Am I, I, is that a good I, observation? I think... Uh, I think, yeah, kind of passion comes through a little bit. And because it's, because I, I mean, I've got no idea what I'm doing. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> none of us I'm, do. Yeah, none of us do. But I'm figuring it out. And yeah. I'm excited by these ideas because I've not come from that world at all. I, I grew up in an ac- academic school. I was very lucky to go to private school and went yeah. to boarding school. But then I went off a complete different tangent and went to a performing arts school where everyone's an extrovert. Yeah, There's yeah. rap battles going on, dance battles, all these kind yeah. of things. And I'm like, wow, okay, this is completely different. So I had to really change myself and become more confident in that. Yeah. But I left all the business stuff and then now I'm coming back to the business stuff with that confidence yeah. and blagging my way through, <laughs> <laughs> through all of it. But I've, I've learned a lot. I've, I've learned a lot and I've, been, I've definitely gained skills and also contacts as well. And what I spoke about before and that networking is so important. And from those events where I've been doing the fashion events of going to hotels or around the world and now I can go to those events and be like hey do you need do you need a drink like hey well uh, what, what's your phone saying oh how many followers have you got and it's these two different things and they all 
Yeah. I'm sorry about each other. Just like, start you're turning into your stepdad, you are. Just yeah, sell him yeah. something. Sell, You'll be able to sell, sell yeah, one thing to yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you want a car? Do you want yeah, a yeah, exactly. <laughs> the difference was he, yeah, he was rubbish at making any money from it. I think, and I think I've, I've got. Well, I've realised how bad he was, and I'm like, okay, let's 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 figure it out. Yeah, do you know what? my dad was the same? Really, my dad was the same. Yeah, he had loads of ideas and different things he was doing, but never sort of like got it. And maybe it was different because you didn't have the internet back then. Sure. You know, not in the same way. Yeah. So yeah. it was. Um, it's a traditional way of working. Like he was always on the phone with yeah. everyone, and like, yeah. but you need it. You need it in black and white, and like you need to. You yeah. Know, yeah. Make stuff happen, but. Um, so yeah, that's a really cool venture. And I've kind of, I feel like we've all kind of agreed. So I'm 26, the other two founders are 20 and 28. So yeah. we're all quite young. But having that kind of underdog feeling to it where we're going up against these big alcohol conglomerates of like Diageo and things like that. But our product is premium and it tastes unreal. Yeah. And so if we can get people on board of like, instead of having like a gin and tonic, you have a rum and tonic, which is a complete mind blown I think I've never yeah. had that before but now drink it all the time we switching it? that kind of the ethos of it yeah. and, and I think with the alcohol brands you need to sell you need to have a good product but like yeah. but a lot of, I think I don't, I'm going to sound bad but like the, the people who have the tequila brands like these some of the big actors some of it's awful yeah not not Casamigos I really like because I worked with George Clooney so that was really nice and I'm going to back him he, 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 <laughs> the Casamigos is incredible yeah. the rest I'm not so sure about um, Ryan Reynolds got one hasn't he okay, Aviation Asian. Gin. have you tried it no I don't really drink actually I mean not anymore okay. but um, yeah, that's, that's do, do you know is, is this a thing like now is this another thing right so Conor McGregor has got a whiskey made like I don't know how much, hundreds of millions probably a lot of money nowadays it's a bit like they call it like legacy countries legacy media yeah. you know and you have like legacy brands yeah. right where like they say like the New York Times will just be a, um, a Twitter handle <laughs> right it won't even be a company anymore right yeah. because they're just like legacy it's like it's like the UK which just there's so much bureaucracy here mm. and, and like Spain they're not developing you know, you look at UAE and it's yeah. like, boom, and you, all these third world countries that are like taking on Bitcoin and stuff, sure. they're just like, boom, they're going to be the new ones. Um, it's a bit like that with brands. And so now, mm. now, because back in the day, you had like big, big brands like Corona or like Malibu, yeah. you know, which still have the same bottle probably. They haven't changed. Um, yeah. But now you come along, you have a million followers on Instagram, mm. right? You've got an audience already. Yeah. Now, these legacy brands are just going to end up because no why would you work with Malibu or you know Morgan company. there's no personality I think because yeah. there's, there's all these people behind it but you don't really know the the company I guess but um, yeah no, but it, I think it's also important like but it I think it's anyone can do it. like yeah it'd get, if you have a million followers and you're like oh yeah I'm going to create this and see what yeah. happens but you have to be switched on and, and, and make it worthwhile like you can't just be because people as we've said before are they clock on they're like yeah. they're not just going to accept that you have this and then yeah. going to be buying it you need to yeah. convince them like oh this is why we're doing it this is the message behind it this is why and yeah yeah yeah. some will buy it some. anyway yeah, yeah some the, will the core audience yeah, yeah. It, but you look at like Ryan Reynolds I suppose he's a good example because he bought a football club like, I mean, Amazing. like, what? The, how cool is that? And, and he's, but he's made it super cool. Massively. Like, Re Rex but, but super he's cool. brought his whole, like, the film world into that. Yeah. You know, the fact, like, they're doing the Amazon series and everything like that. So it's, like, not only his name, but he's bringing all of his experience in the film world yeah. and, and, and TV and then transferring it into that, bringing all the influential people along yeah. as well. Yeah. And you can see it just, like, rise, can't you? It's, yeah. It's crazy. And it, I think his passion for it comes across. The passion is important. And that, that, like you say, that's the thing. Like, you seem really passionate about your stuff and, you know, maybe you buy a football club one day, but who, who knows? But um, it. I won't be buying my football club. Well, maybe I would. Who's your football club? Southampton. Oh, yeah, it's tough, man. It's you might tough. as well. To I mean, be you might as well. Yeah, yeah, I should. Yeah, but it is. It's interesting, and like, it's yeah. Props to him, man. Yeah, he's, do, he's doing, and, and and it's that passion behind it, and the personality, and you want to see him win. Yeah, I think that's it. This is things like um, I'm from like Swindon originally. Swindon, mm. are, I when in nineteen like in the nineties, they got the playoffs, got to the Premier League, right, yeah. got in trouble for some laundry. I don't. Know, something happened. They got dropped <laughs> right. down a couple of leagues. Some dodgy stuff like that. Right. But they won at Wembley, and so I've always like you know I don't follow them or anything like that. But 
Like I was like, well, imagine buying Swindon and, and, and just and like winning, yeah. bringing like YouTube and the film stuff, and making it amazing fun, yeah, you know, yeah. and making an experience for the fans. Because yep. so, they're so old school still. You look at what's happened to Wrexham. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously he's an A list, absolute legend actor, yeah. the best, like best in the world probably. Mm. Um, but it, it, and I find a lot of entrepreneurs that I know that are similar age to you, maybe in their thirties too. They're taking on their parents' company, right. but they're just bringing up to the 21st century yeah and yeah. that little notch yeah, is going have that shift doesn't yeah. It? yeah and it doesn't take that much mm. um but just a bit more like one guy i was talking to earlier based out in the sticks but he's going for clients in london now he's got clients in london and his dad would never have done that because he's like oh stay here yeah, yeah, you know yeah. so do you think yeah. it's a big thing with like the geography of stuff like because i've noticed even with like the hammer rum stuff these guys are from Wolverhampton and they, we've like done a lot of venues and stuff there but like the switch from going from there to like London yeah. now it's like a completely different ball game and then again we didn't want to do some stuff in Paris and then LA yeah. and like those kind of big cities makes makes stuff happen this is where you come in because they probably don't have the confidence to yeah. just like rock up yeah and obviously you've got a great audience yeah, yeah, yeah so it's yeah it's cool I think yeah you need to have yeah we spoke about it before like that confidence to be able to back yeah. yourself in those situations. Yeah. But you need to have the foundations beforehand. You're like, this is what we're selling or this is what we're doing. But having that confidence to be like, you, you need to get on board with this. Yeah. And I think it kind of helps probably a little bit with my acting because I, <laughs> yeah, as I said before, I've got no, no idea. I'm like, when this, when those first couple of meetings, the carbon fingerprint, when they're like, yeah, we got the B2B and then the B2C. And I'm like, God. B to B, B, and all these algorithms and, and um, anagrams. And I can't even say the right <laughs> word. <yeah. laughs> yeah, okay. I'm just sitting there and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I could bring a couple of followers to it, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. But no, but I'm, I'm learning as I'm going and I think that's important. And if you're enjoying doing it, then it makes, it makes all the difference. Yeah, the confidence thing is like everything. Like absolutely, you don't turn up in like a period drama outfit. And oh stuff. yeah, 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 or costume all the way. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. I haven't done that yet. I might no. try it. I might try it. But um, no, I, I haven't done it. But Not I do yet. dress. I, I feel a bit underdressed today. Actually, I was going to come in a suit, and then I didn't. That would have been a first. Really? It would have been a first. Maybe actually. I don't know. Not overishly loud. I'm not talking like I've got some like pretty bold suits, but I was going to just you know casual and could be like businessman. That's not like Joel Domit suits on. <laughs> yeah. the oh, how funny enough. Yeah, I've worked with that. Des- I've worked with that designer quite. Joshua. A lot. Yeah, Joshua. Yeah, yeah no, Joshua he's. Again. I've done a podcast with him. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Small world. Mad. Yeah. We no. should all team up and buy a football club. <laughs> yeah. Everyone. Yeah, we should. <laughs> you know, he was an ex-footballer. Yeah. 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 Fulham goalkeeper. Who would have known? That's crazy. Yeah, skateboarder no, everything get together yeah oh, it's interesting like the kind of team aspect of that and I, that's what I want to create a bit with the especially the rum as well of like with like models and things like that getting everyone on board without giving loads of equity okay. away yeah because yeah, yeah. you can't just be giving it out all the time but like get yeah. people on board and I guess ambassadors is probably the word I'm looking yeah. for, but also but it's important to they're, be selective in that. And they have to be passionate. Yeah. Because that whole influencer thing, it's like they just churn. It's dead. Don't yeah, care. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. Well, they might do one thing and then there's no longevity to it. Yeah. So you need to have people back, yeah, back it and be passionate about it and be salespeople in, 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 their, in their own sense. Yeah. You've got a big following. Do you, you must get approached by companies like however often. Mm. Do you... Are you just not, not that interested? Or would you rather do your own thing to get more value out of it? Yeah, or, or I think, I think no, no. yeah, I think, I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I've been approached by like lots of different brands and things, but I feel it for me, they have to be on message, but also with my acting thing, I need to be less accessible in, the, in that sense. Like I need to have some mystery around yeah. what, what I do. Otherwise people are just not going to believe when I'm playing, you know, the, I don't know. A serial killer. <laughs> or something, or something, I don't know. <laughs> Can't be. Before you're all the rum time. in the yeah, background, yeah, product yeah. placement everywhere. Oh, don't worry about that. Yeah, I'm going to be bringing it to all the sets. Green and everything. I'm like, do you think uh, you could probably do a rum uh, rum colada? Yeah, you could <laughs> easily. Yeah. I'm going to change James Bond's drink to uh, <laughs> to a rum martini or something. Um, but no, I think uh, it's important for me to be everything in line with what what, what I want to do. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I think. That, that was a no it's a nice position to mm. be in that mm. you can do that because back in the day yeah. oh you see people online like um 
Samuel Jackson, he'll sell anything, won't he? Okay, he had to. Like okay. Barclays Bank, he's yeah. doing everything. It's yeah, like yeah. Idris Elba would do everything. But it's so hard not like, I, especially if you're a struggling actor, actor or like for even when yeah. things are going well, you get offered a lot of money to, to work with some of these brands, but yeah. they're dead brands. And like, yeah. again, you need to have longevity. Yeah. You can't be burning out. You might yeah. make a load of money now, but in the long term, those, yeah. those brand deals are going to dry up. And yeah. like uh, again, we speak about like legacy, and like yeah. it's important to be have all the right components to to complete that legacy. Yeah, they did. Like Bruce Willis did a did he do a Sky advert once or something? I don't know. Yeah, probably. yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, adverts. Yeah, they pay a lot, a, a load of, of cash, money, a lot of money. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, did, I did my first, <laughs> I, I actually my first acting job was an advert. It was a Vodafone advert, so that was a while ago. Yeah. And it and the audition, I had to learn like five pages of dialogue. And I was like, yeah, cool, that's fine. That's normal, by the way. That's, yeah. that's, not, that's not much. And then, uh, and then they were like, yeah, you got the role. I was like, oh, my first acting gig, this is going to be sick. And then I get there and they're like, yeah, so if you could just do like a few keepy uppies in the corner, that'd be great. And I was like, what? I was like, I don't even know if I can do keepy uppies. And they're like, you, you can't do keepy uppies. And I was like, well, hang on a minute. You, <laughs> I'd learned this five pages of dialogue. Like, now you're asking me to do something completely different. <laughs> Needless to say, Smashed it. Got at least like four or five keepy uppies in. Really? And then I had one line at the end, and that was it. And how much did they pay you? At the time, I was 14, 15, and I got paid like five grand. I think. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? At the time, that was, yeah. that was a lot of money. Yeah. Well, it still is now. Yeah, it still is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but at the end, I was like, I used I'm going to be in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the next David Beckham. <laughs> I'm going to be sorted. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Like, I remember like people doing like one line in adverts, yeah. Like back then, it was like t- eight, ten grand. You're like, what? Like, it's so bar- much yeah, money. Yeah, a friend of mine is yeah is smashing the adverts at the moment, and he's um, yeah, like the buyouts Can for that are crazy. He's everywhere. He's on the tube. He's in different cities. Wait, who's this? A friend of mine called Twain, and he's yeah. one of my best mates from my school. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's been he's been doing Deliveroo, Uber Eats, really churning. Yeah, churning absolutely through, churning. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's loving it. Yeah, yeah. Every time I see him, he's got a new. Um, he's like, I'm like, what's that? He's like, oh yeah, it's the new MacBook. And then he's like, oh yeah, it's the Louis Vuitton bag. And I'm like, all right, I think you need to calm down. He's spending it. <laughs> he's spending. It. <laughs> yeah, we've been telling him he needs to calm down a bit. But it's hard though. When when the things are going so well, you just think you're just like. And social well, media. And social media. Yeah. yeah. If um, if you could have any acting job, what role would it be? <clears throat> I uh, I think. Every actor's kind of thing is you want to be a superhero at some point, and I would love to be Batman, but I'm not built like Batman, so I'm more of a Robin, and I will take a Robin quite happily. So I think Robin is probably <laughs> reachable, and Batman, who knows? I might grow another couple of inches and get jacked. Get jacked. Yeah, 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 that would be good. So yeah, I think, yeah, and also, yeah, I mean, James Bond has always been one growing up, you're like, that would be sick. Yeah. And I think they should go younger. You know, 26, you know, Brighton, born, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I think James Wand is that I'm, I was disappointed with the last film, though, that he okay. died. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. that he died. He was so good, I think. He was the best one. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, what? I mean, that's a whole separate conversation. Yeah. Like, they're. Oh. Impressive. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, they're talking about making James Bond. I don't even know what's going on. Yeah, that is we'll what that is one thing. Like, you can have all, like, different things, blah, blah, blah. But James Bond is one thing yeah. that you can't, like, take away. You know, yeah. that's the one thing. Yeah. Just do another another film yeah, with yeah, other... franchise, yeah. Yeah, 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 whatever. You know, Jenny Bond, whatever, you know. Jenny Bond. Jenny Janet Bond. Bond. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do whatever you want, yeah, you know. Yeah. Barbie Bot, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Just stay away from James. Yeah, yeah, that's, no, that's fair enough. Yeah, no, I think you'd make a good one. Nice you got one. the classic English look about yeah, you. Yeah, the English gentleman. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, no, yeah? that's good. Yeah. If you do it, have you, do you have to like learn martial arts and start beating the shit out of people? Like, do I have to learn to yeah. beat the shit out of people? Yeah, yeah like, so it's imagine. authentic. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I do that all the time. What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah, no, I, <laughs> yeah, no, um, I'm, I've always been quite big. In, I always want to do like my own stunts and things, but yeah. I haven't had that many opportunities to do like cool fight scenes. Instead, I've just been like drowned in a sewer for like two days. That, yeah. was, that was that was not, and I got two ear infections, so it wasn't quite the Tom Cruise <laughs> moment that I was hoping for. Um, so yeah, I'm, well, I'm going to get there, but I will be. I will learn it all. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, starting in the gutter, starting from the bottom, right? Literally, literally, I'm just writing my own story. <laughs> if you're Batman, that would be so cool because yeah, yeah, that's well. like. 
every Watch guy's space. dream, isn't it? Being Batman. Yeah. He's yeah. got no superpowers though. Like devilishly handsome. <laughs> Good ladies, yeah. No, he doesn't. Well, yeah, no, he, no, he doesn't really. He's just got gadgets, hasn't he? Yeah, got a lot and of gadget, gadget. And man. he's rich. You watch, I'll be Inspector Gadget before I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> you could be like, you could like, you could be the real Batman. You could make tons of cash out of the climate, yeah. you know, thing, and then like spend it on supercars and maybe that's what I'm channeling. I'm channeling my own Bruce Wayne, like a little investor, like yeah. Maybe that's a good thing. Uh, there you go. I'll make a note of that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's your thing. Yeah. You could do a timeline based yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Imagine. I'll be fighting crime at night now. You watch. Yeah, yeah. All sorts. You have Harrison Towers like in the, yeah, in the yeah. centre of London. Symbol. Yeah, the Big CF H. Symbol, yeah. yeah. Not bad. Yeah, that's a good idea. So Batman, any others? I'll, I'll take what, uh, yeah, what's coming. I think those are the two cool ones. But it's, it's hard. I mean, I would love to play a, a serial killer as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm see. I've come across as quite, um, I think anyway, friendly. But and like, but the roles where I played, especially in theatre, where I played like the darker roles, everyone afterwards is like, wow, I've never really seen that side of you. And I'm like, oh, well, you got to watch out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, having those, I think roles that are gonna expand your your portfolio of stuff and you know keep people guessing as what to next I think the best actors are the ones that are not just playing the same role at the same time yeah. but have that range to be completely different people and you're like is that the same person like yeah who's your favourite actor I think uh, I'm going to guess hard. I'm going to guess go on, yeah. go for it. Bale yeah he is pretty sick yeah yeah. He's, he, yeah he's definitely in my top five I would say yeah he does all those things yeah yeah he's, he's very good at morphing into characters the same with um, Joaquin Phoenix as well yeah, I think yeah. he's one of my favourites yeah um, have you seen Equilibrium no I don't think I have maybe I have no no I haven't what is that is that one that should be it's one of Kristen Bale's best films it was like Matrix days back, in, back then have, have you seen it Carl? Oh my god, watch Equilibrium. Again, that's on the list. Watch yeah. Equilibrium. <laughs> I watched it about a year ago again and it's so good. It's like action, yeah. uh, it's like unbelievable. What's your favourite film in a business sense where you're like, that's a cool business story? Uh, probably um, Boiler Room. Another one I'm not sure I've seen. Yeah, it's, well. it's basically about traders back in the day. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's yeah. like really, really cool. Boiler Room, check that yeah, out. I can list you off some yeah, old give, school give films. Me a, yeah, give me a list. I'll, I'll be yeah, I'll, I'll text you some. Like, you know, yeah. But yeah, no, um, Equilibrium. I, I, like, it was one of those films that didn't like go big in the cinemas. Right. It was like a cult film. Okay. Um, you know, a bit like Zoolander. No one really watched it at cinema. Then yeah, it became but then a cult. huge, huge yeah, thing. Yeah, the yeah. The fashion world. Yeah, that's um, funny. Yeah, no, Kristen Bale's probably my favourite actor as well. Nice. Does yeah. he do anything else apart from acting? He's old school. He's got yeah, one job. He's old school. Yeah, he's got yeah, one job. He doesn't need to do anything. He's else. not in his 20s, so he doesn't yeah, have to hustle he's not anymore. The same. Yeah, yeah, he's not waking up at seven, everybody. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, no, I don't know what else he does. But you're fine, yeah, as you said, like a lot of people are doing a lot of different things. Um, do you notice a lot of actors doing the same thing? The similar age to you? Uh... No, I mean, there are, there's definitely a few people. I wouldn't say it's a, a common thing. I think everyone's always got some other outlet. Mainly a lot of the time it's stay in that creative world, whether they direct yeah. or they write or things like that, and they like to stay in that hub. I, for me, still want to do that at some point, but at this moment in time, let's venture out and bring the creative from what I do currently into those two different things. Um, and I feel that's where my assets and things lie, so I can pump forward with that um, you were telling me earlier as well that you're into cars and um, electric you like McLaren's <laughs> well, electric cars <laughs> yeah no I, I electric like planes that. right you yeah, fly on electric yeah, planes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no I walk I walk, yeah, <laughs> I walk everywhere I walk, I <laughs> um, no you didn't Rosie booked you a cab oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it better been a hybrid <laughs> <laughs> yeah no um I do, I do like cars, but as I said... You're I'm a McLaren not, fan. I'm not a McLaren fan. Really? You're not, well, they, a lot of them break, right? So they're, like, mm. I know a lot of... They're, they're a new brand, okay. but they are so fast, those cars. Unreal. Like, I've tried racing a few, and it's just not worked out well for me. When they... 
yeah, the difference from like driving it around here and then when you do a track day with one of them and they are just like rapid. And yeah. I've been lucky enough, yeah, to do some stuff on McLaren. So I, I've got not a bad word to say about them. Of course. They, yeah, because they, they give you free cars, right? Well, well, they are, they've le- lent me cars if before. They can lend me cars and I'll <laughs> talk to them. <laughs> they actually said the, the other day, they were like, oh, we're sending you a, a gift. Um, let us know your address. And I was like, is it going to be some sounds, keys? Sounds dodgy. And then these, uh, <laughs> they've done a collaboration with APL, the trainer. You know, they're like, it's really nice trainers, but they're oh. bright orange right. running trainers. You can't miss me now around Richmond Park. You actually wear them? Oh, yeah, 100%. I'm a big ambassador. (laughs) 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 Can't get get enough. (laughs) I'm zooming past everyone. Um, Gives me that extra speed. (laughs) It's not quite a 7.65 speed, but I'm, yeah. Can you edit some, like, McLaren logos when he says that in the background? (laughs) But but no, I love those cars. And yeah, Yeah. as I said, yeah, when I got, was lucky enough to be given one for a bit of time in LA. And like, but the thing in LA is, like, you can be driving that car and everyone's like, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Here in London, in my little town, in like my village where I grew up, where I took my mum on like pretty much hot laps around my old village, everyone's like, who's that 12 year old driving that car? <laughs> <laughs> but in LA, it kind of goes under the radar a bit more. Which yeah. Is nice. Yeah, no, it's different out there. Yeah. Mm. I remember someone lent me a Ferrari, oh, yeah, a white Ferrari convertible. I was there for two weeks. Wow. A client of mine. And um, I was just, I was going to like Sir House, rocking up. Like, I was just like, keep it running, in, yeah, throw the keys. But yeah, I know it felt, felt like a million dollars about 10 years ago, no longer, probably. Yeah, but yeah, just funny. driving around LA, something funny about that. I think it's the you know? sun and like yeah. everything, it's just, yeah, it's nice. It's a cool playground of, of yeah. places. Yeah. It's just homeless people now, isn't it? Like, yeah, pretty yeah, no, cool. I think, I think COVID has like been a massive, yeah, obviously change in that and it's, uh, it's difficult I, yeah. I went out there for a bit last year but I haven't been I'm going to go out again soon is it noticeable uh, yeah, the I yeah, 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 yeah yeah San Francisco's worse did you hear about that um, the guy that started Cash App got stabbed to death a few days ago yeah you know Jack Dorsey's like partner wow found, co-founder of Cash App just walking home just got stabbed in killed where in San Francisco San Francisco yeah Jesus yeah it was on Twitter that's but terrifying. It, it's so bad there. Mm. Yeah, you know, like crazy. Yeah, well, you're you googling, aren't you? Yeah, you got you just got stabbed in the street and then died. Like, and it, apparently it's so bad in San Francisco now. Wow, you just can't even, even like here, I don't wear any. I don't wear my watches out no. because you know, there's no point. Really. No, yeah, that's scary. Have, have you been to Dubai? No. I haven't. Honestly, it's so nice there. Eh? It's so uh, nice, yeah. Like every, obviously, I've got a son now, so I look yep. at safety, like, sure. subconsciously. You know, yeah, I'm not, yeah. like, walking around, like, is this slippy? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> what yeah, is yeah. going on here? Yeah, yeah, let me check the label. But, yeah. but, you know, you can leave your phone out, you can wear a watch, you know. There's I, you no, know. no problems with that. Wow. No, it's just, it's so safe there. It's such yeah, a, I really need to go out there. I, my, um, yeah, my friends have moved out there, but I, um, yeah, I want to go out there. Maybe go yeah. through it. It's, again, it's like when you talk about legacy countries, mm-hmm. legacy brands, there's so much bureaucracy, mm-hmm. you know, that all these new ones that are coming through, it's quite exciting because young people can look at all this and go, oh, no, I can make it. I can yeah, create yeah. stuff. You know, you, you look at um, um, Dubai and there's just no bureaucracy. If, if they haven't got a, re- a way to do it, they'll figure out a way to do it yeah. within a few weeks, you know, and then all of a sudden you can do stuff so it's great there if you're it's entrepreneur like, yeah solving those solutions like looking starting with the problem and then using your mind and yeah, yeah. to be like this is how to solve it yeah. work on it in small steps small steps yeah and not having loads of red tape yeah. you know yeah, like yeah. here there's so much right. it's like the Gulliver Travels analogy you know like where so. it's like a thousand ropes holding them down uh, yeah. you know individually those ropes can't hold you down but Keep when there's a thousand, mm. and that's a problem here, anything you want to do is a thousand ropes, right? right? But in Dubai, there's like 10 or five or okay. two or one. So you can get around it and, and crack on. Gives you yeah, that creativity. Yeah. And freeness. Yeah. You can start companies. You can yeah. like, and everyone's, it's a safe environment. So it inspires people to like, you know, move out there mm. tax free, obviously. Um, yeah. That's, yeah. Unreal. Yeah. yeah. It, it is interesting how legacy countries and brands are just dying out. Mm. They were all going to become Instagram handles, you know. People like you and Ryan Reynolds yeah. just going to start owning football clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know. be, yeah. Winning, winning Wembley. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. You should buy Southampton. 
figure out a way. A couple of years, yeah. <laughs> and then you could do a friendly game, Wrexham versus Wrexham, Southampton. Southampton, and, and, you, it, yeah, and yeah. you've got to play. Oh, yeah, it's like and basically Ryan's got to play. But, like, yeah, 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 going up. <laughs> but on a huge budget. Yeah, right? a huge budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be fun. I'm into that, definitely. Do you reckon if, if the thing is, like, like, do you People reckon I'm cut and pass Brian Reynolds left back? Yeah, I absolutely am. <laughs> Pinging it, top pins, <laughs> sorting it out. Yes, I am. Yeah, thanks, John. <laughs> if, if you could do a film with anyone, who would it be? I'm thinking Ryan Reynolds is one of them. It's got to be, isn't it? I would love to. Yeah, I would love to. I would actually, I think probably top is probably like Tom Hanks. <laughs> so in the next, so you've got these two companies. Yeah. I think the client, the, uh, the client one is going to be mega. That only needs one little thing to happen, yep. and then it could be everywhere, 100%. especially on Twitter. Yep. Um, you know what you could do? You could, um, you can use Bitcoin, right? So people could pay in Bitcoin. The thing that will be difficult for that is obviously the amount of energy that's used to mine Bitcoin. Which is nothing now. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's like 60% renewable. Right. Okay. I could go on about Bitcoin for a long time. Okay, no, we need to have a separate conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, Bitcoin to be profitable has to be renewable, right. you know, because yeah, otherwise yeah. you yeah, don't. Of course, yeah, right. and I think anything that's going to move in that times of technology, then yeah. it's, and as I said before, at, the, at this stage, we're very we want to be collaborative and want to work with those kind of things. I think yeah. it'd be stupid to sort of shut the doors and be like, no, this is our thing, and we know what we're doing. At the same time. We've created something really, really cool. Yeah. But we want to be able to evolve it. And yeah. however that looks, we'll be, we'll be good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm on board for it. Yeah. Like, I'm on board. <laughs> it's the only climate thing I am on board with. I'm glad. Like, I'm glad this has been the, the one that's... You've come back. Turned, turned, turned your head. <laughs> opt in. Yeah, yeah no, because I, I just do loads of research. And like I've, you know, done, had companies and my background's market and advertising. Yeah. And when you see all this stuff, like I didn't do it for long. I didn't like the industry very much. But yeah. when you see all the bullshit and yeah. you're like, what? Is this in everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you just do so much research. And, you know, it's good that opt-in companies like yours... The That's transparency that was that, yeah. Yeah, it's just the way forward. Mm -hmm. Like, it'll be interesting. Definitely. Exciting. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to tell me your Dubai friend. No, we're not going to cover that, are we? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I'll leave him out of it. I mentioned works. Dubai giving you, yeah, like, yeah, the room to know, mention yeah. the story, but... Yeah, no, no. All right, yeah. He's uh, no, <laughs> he's he won't he won't, he'll watch this as well. He'll probably want to, he'll be on it next. <laughs> <laughs> no, he won't because yeah. she told me not to recommend him. What was boarding school like? Sick, really. I loved it. I wanted to go to boarding school. Yeah, because I don't know what it was. I, I mean, I only live like half an hour down the road as well. It wasn't yeah. like I was being shipped off away, but it was just quite nice to like have that camaraderie of stuff and I got a lot more work done as well if I was at home I'd yeah. be on my Xbox or PS, PS4 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't have a PS4 I had an Xbox and um, <laughs> at <laughs> home you'd have had both <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly I would have got both but um, but no I loved it and then the two other co-founders of Carb Carb Fingerprint people that I boarded with so, really yeah and we you were in a in a room with someone for potentially like five years so it's, it's a long time and it's yeah. you start with like five other guys and it goes down four three two yeah um, but I, I loved it did you go to boarding school? nah no. but I know I, I've got um, friends who their kids have gone like eaten and random like crazy yeah. like you know um, it can go either way from what I've seen I think it like, can and I think there's and we had a lot of uh, foreign students and some of them struggled a lot because they are literally just being shipped off and you know yeah. don't know anyone barely speak any of the language um, I think the school did a really good job of trying to include them and everything like that but yeah. and also the the contacts from those people who live in the, the, the Far East and in the US and stuff like that are in China yeah, yeah and, and China and, right yeah, China yeah. Korea Japan um, we had we had a lot of people from different places and like now it's really valuable contacts to know that if I ever, whenever I go out there, I can link up with them and see what they're up to, and yeah, and they're all yeah doing very well in their own businesses. So is China doing anything with the climate? They're just not even interested. Not as far as I know, but I, 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 I don't know. I, I think they're not. 
It's, it's not like, on the forefront, I don't think. Yeah, it's like, well, I think, what's the UK put out? Like 1%. Mm. And then we're doing like full, like trying to get net zero. Yeah. yeah. Like, how does it, unless all the others do it, I don't think, see how it's going to make any difference. pushed as well. And like, I just really don't understand where, the, yeah, why the money is not going investing into stuff that can combat that. It's confusing and frustrating. And, but there's ways of going about it, and, you know. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Opt in's the way. Opt in is the way. I think you so. You can only inspire people. Do you your can't bit. tell yeah. them what to do. Do what you bit, or do what you can. Yeah, it's uh, times are really tough at the moment, living wise, and you can't be just. And now you want to charge them for social media. Well, there you go. That's, what, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, we're opting in to do it. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah. No, yeah, you can't. As I said. If you can do it, great. If you can't, no skin off, no skin off our back. But you're yeah. aware of the issue now. Yeah. So no, it's cool. Mm-hmm. So what's the website? I'm going to go on it after this. I'm going to figure well, it out. It hasn't my properly launched yet, so I'm going to get. I'm going to have to wait to to, to, to show you. And beta. I show them, but yeah, it's beta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I mean, started, you know, with just like a, a type form and stuff like that. But now we've been developing for the last year and a half to have it in a place where it can be where something where I want to show you all right cool yeah all right i look forward to it awesome i can still invest right yeah yeah, yeah. you've got time <laughs> <laughs> all right cool any other business are we good no man that's that's my business that's me business that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully that was uh hopefully that was yeah. no it's cool i've yeah i'm glad you've taught me something yes. about that yeah. um now i'm gonna be more open to it i think that's good man yeah it, it's just opt-in that for me you can't tell people what to do no. it's just it's just like no point no, but I'm, I'm happy to pay a couple of quid a month you yeah. know no problem that's it you know even I pay podcasts I mean yeah like don't don't it, start yeah. guilt tripping me yeah no I'm just saying you know <laughs> <laughs> nobody watch this okay yeah, I don't want to get charged <laughs> <laughs> it's covered it's covered yeah. alright man well thanks for coming in no thank you appreciate it thanks man legend We'll, we'll cut the pedo stuff out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm never going to work with it.